equations of sine and cosine functions. Uh, before our break, we were graphing sine and cosine functions. So what's going to happen today is we will be given the picture of the graph, and then we will come up with the equation, whereas before we were given the equation and then we had to uh, draw the graph. So we wrote out a few steps to help us go through the process. And the first step is determine whether you think it's a sine graph or a cosine graph. And the idea behind that is look at where the graph starts in the y-axis. Because if you recall from the sine function, sine's parent function starts at 0, 0. 0 on the y-axis. And then the cosine function on the y-axis, it starts, the cosine graph starts at 0, 1. So look for that. And then you can make yourself a fill in the blank. So a blank before sine and a blank before the x. And then today we're not going to really look at the plus something or minus something of the functions. But the blank before the sine or before the cosine words is the amplitude. It's our vertical stretcher compression. And then the period is determined by what goes inside the function, which is uh, the coefficient on the x. And what we can do to determine the value that's going to go in front of the x is we can use this formula, 2 pi divided by the period. That's going to equal the b, which again is the coefficient in front of the x. And then, watch out, and, and I have to tell myself the same thing. Look and see if there's a reflection over the x-axis or the over the y-axis because that's the last thing that we need to factor into our equation and not factor literally. We need to make sure that we put it into our equation. So lots of words there that don't always make sense until we actually do a problem or two. So let's take a look at our problems. And the first one looks like this. And what we want to decide at the start is, are we working with a sine function or are we working with a cosine function? And again, if we look at the y-axis, what we see here is that we see our y-intercept is at zero. We are going to start with sine. The amplitude tells us how high the graph goes or how low goes, how low the graph goes based on that middle line. And what we can see is that our graph goes as high as 4 or as low as negative 4. That means that our amplitude on this graph is 4. The period is how long it takes for our graph to complete one full cycle, and when we graph sine, we start at zero, we end at zero, and actually the way I kind of think of it is we start at zero, we go up, go to zero in the middle, go down, and then back end at zero. So where we finish there, where I put that dotted line, and I'm going to, or dotted, that dot, I'm going to put it in red so people on the video can see, that's where we finished our sine curve. And as we look at our increments on the graph, we've got 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi is where the red dot is. So that's our period. And once we can determine what the period is from our picture, then we can use that to help us find the B value. As I flip back on the previous page, remember that the equation is 2 pi divided by the period. That will give us the B which is the coefficient of x. So we can take 2 pi divided by 8 pi. And when we divide, the pi's cancel out. And then 2 divided by 8 is 1 4. That's going to be the coefficient of our b value. And now we can fill in what we have because we don't have we're not moving the graph up or down at this moment. So we've got some number in front of the sine function. We know we're dealing with sine. And that number in front of it is the amplitude. Based on our chart here, it's a 4. 
And then inside our function, we found our b value, which is the coefficient on the x, which is going to be 1 fourth x. And there's our equation for our given graph. One comment, just because the amplitude is 4, the number in front of the sign is 4, doesn't mean that you have 1 fourth. Doesn't mean that the denominator of the function is 4. It looks like it on the first couple of examples, but it doesn't have to be. The amplitude is completely separate over here from what determines the period. So again, what we're looking at here when we're dealing with these graphs is we need to decide what kind of graph we're working with. Are we working with a sine function? Are we working with a cosine function? And we do that by looking at the y-intercept. And on our second example, <coughs> we also have a y-intercept of 0, 0, which once again leads us to believe that we're dealing with a sine graph. Then we can go ahead and fill in what we know. Well, the amplitude determines how high the graph goes or how low the graph goes based on that middle line. And we have a high value of 2 and a low value of negative 2, which means that our amplitude is going to be 2. Again, with sine, we start at 0 and we end at 0, and we actually have a middle value that's 0. So here's at 0, 0, we have the beginning point. At 2, we've got our middle point, and at 4, we've got our ending value, the 0 again, which means that our period is 4 in this particular case. We've completed one curve, but another thing that we might notice is, is that a typical sine curve, we start at 0, then we go up, then 0, then down, then 0. It didn't happen that way. What happens is that, that there's a reflection over the x-axis. Reflection over the x-axis. Which I just need to write that to remind myself. But once we've got the idea that it's a sign, We've got our entire period. We can find the coefficient on our x of our sine function by taking 2 pi divided by the period. Again, if you look up above on your paper at that uh, 4a, it's got that formula in there, 2 pi divided by 4. Well, 2 fourths is the same thing as 1 half, which we can say is pi over 2. And if you want to write the 1 in front of the pi, you can do that. And now that we know this, we're going to fill in. We know everything that we need here in this function. Once again, we're dealing with sine. And the number in front of the function is the vertical stretch or compress. It's called the amplitude. It's a 2. And then... Inside our function, the coefficient on the x is our b value, and it's going to be pi over 2, the value we just found. Make sure that you write the x. So one more thing, and I told myself not to forget it, and I still forgot it. I wrote it down here. Reflect over the x-axis. Well, how do we reflect over the x-axis? That's going to be a negative in front of the function. How does it uh, reflect over the x-axis? So once again, our equation, because the reflection is y equals negative 2 sine pi over 2 x. Let's take the next one as a cosine function. We've done two sines. And when we look at the graph, once again, we're looking to decide, we're looking to see where does our graph start? 
and our graph does not start, so to speak. We need to look at the y-axis. Let me say that a little bit better. It doesn't have a y-intercept of zero on this one. So that's going to indicate to us that we're working with the cosine function. But the rest of it is still calculated the same way. Look at the high point of the graph. Look at the low point of the graph. Our high point of the graph is 5 halves. Our low point of the graph is negative 5 halves. So our amplitude is 5 halves. We look at the period. And if you think about it, a normal cosine function, it starts here and here and here and here and here. There's what a normal cosine function looks like. So, again, I'll try not to forget, but I know that you will keep me honest. It looks like, once again, that we are going to reflect over the x-axis. But the reason that I wrote the parent function of the cosine function is we need to determine the period and we start there where I just put the first red dot and then we're going to finish at the same place where that second red dot is which looks like the period is 2 in this graph and then we can look above on our chart there or our little formula part for a that says 2 pi divided by the period gives us our b value. So it's going to be 2 pi divided by 2. Well, 2 pi divided by 2, once again, 2 divided by 2 is 1. They cancel out, so we get pi. And because we haven't moved our graph up or down at all, we have all the information we need to fill in our blanks, like I said, up there on number two. So it's y equals the amplitude times cosine of pi. There's that pi that we just found. That's the coefficient on the x. And I'm going to heed my note. We reflect it. So we're going to turn this graph over. So we need to put a negative in front of that 5x. It's fairly straightforward once you get the hang of it. But being able to identify if it's a sine graph or a cosine graph is the first issue. And once you can get past that, I think that you can figure out the graph or figure out the equation of the graph. So when we look at problem number four, what do we think? Is it sine or is it cosine? It's cosine. What's our amplitude? High point of pi, low point of negative pi. It's a cosine graph. What do you think the period is on here? We started here. We finished here. And sure enough, it is 2 pi. And if we look real close, this problem reminds me very much of the last problem. Because once again, this graph is reflected over the x-axis. And I make that note to myself to hopefully remember. And what I should just do is I should just put a negative right there right now. And then I don't even have to worry about forgetting it. But to get the rest of our information that we need to draw our, or to write our equation, we're going to take 2 pi divided by the period, which happens to be 2 pi, and 2 pi divided by 2 pi is 1. <laughs> and now we can finally fill in what we need to on a graph. We already put that negative in for the reflection over the x-axis. Our amplitude is pi. We are working with a cosine function. 
And then in our parentheses here, it's 1x, but you do not have to write the 1. One of the questions that I got earlier today is, do we have to put the parentheses in? I think you should. And the nice part, too, is when we get to graphing these functions on the calculator, the calculator puts in the parentheses every single time. So it's a good reminder for us that we should put the parentheses in. So just a couple more. So we got interrupted with the fire drill in the middle of our video, but here we go again. We we're just getting ready to start example number five, and we need to decide whether we think that it's a sine curve or a cosine curve. And it is a cosine, once again, and one of the reasons that we know that is that we don't have an intercept at zero, zero. So we're going to go for the cosine curve, which it is. Then we look at our amplitude. Our amplitude is our vertical stretch or compression. In this case, again, it's a stretch. And our high point on our graph is 2, and our low point on the graph is negative 2. So our amplitude is 2. As we take a quick look, we've been really reflecting the graph. Is this graph reflected over the x-axis? It actually is. If it um, wasn't reflected over the x-axis, then our first value here on the y would be up here at 2 instead of down here at negative 2. So in an attempt to remember not to, to reflect the graph, I'm going to write that negative in there right now. Now, that's a little bit hard to see on this graph, but we've got a hash mark in between there, and then off to the far right is a 2. That's the edge of our graph, and it looks like it's going to take us from 0 to 2 for our period, and I know that's hard to see on the video, but 2 is going to be our period in here, and once we determine that value, then we can go back to 4a, which says that 2 pi divided by 2, 2 pi divided by 2 is pi, will give us our coefficient for our x of our function. And so the first 2, our amplitude of 2, is going to be the coefficient on our cosine function. And then here's cosine. And then we also have our b value that we just calculated is pi times x. So as we finish, and we look at our last graph here, what do you think? Is it sine or is it cosine? And it is. Sign. What's our amplitude? The amplitude is 4. What's our period on this graph? It's 5. Did we reflect at all in this graph? We did not. So our b value is going to be calculated by taking 2 pi divided by pi. And 2 pi divided by pi is 2. And now we have all the information that we need. We didn't reflect, so I won't forget that. It's going to be 4 times sine, and then it's going to be 2x.